good morning. Uh, we are now moving on to our British sale, which we're holding on May the 9th. Um, we have a dedicated sale to British notes, and we're very fortunate this time to have um, two of the most iconic collections of English notes um, extant today, probably. The Lou Manzi collection and the A.J. Sims collection, um, both very important collections. Um, we also have uh, a selection of Isle of Man from Brian Ascoff, who's a well-known uh, collector. Um, there are Scottish notes, Irish notes, so a good British sale. But the highlights are undoubtedly the Manzi and Sims collection. Um, Lou Manzi started collecting, and I, I remember it very well because I started work several decades ago uh, at Sphinx um, in the ancient coin department and I was moved to the banknote department either because I was no good at ancient coins or they thought who's going to do bank banknotes was really treated very it was a Mickey Mouse area of collectibles I think when we started but it, I'm glad to say it's now a, a full-blown collector market but when I started doing banknotes uh, it coincided uh, at the time with um, a very nice collection coming in from a Bank of England source and uh, Lou Manzi happened to come in, I think it was, to buy a black and white fiver because he remembered his father giving him one way, way back. And I just happened to show Lou a few banknotes, and that was the beginning of a, how does one put it, the relationship? Um, <laughs> Lou is, how does one put it, relentlessly cheerful, I think is the best way <laughs> to describe it. Um, and I very much enjoyed selling Lou some banknotes, and Lou seems to have taken it in good heart, spending a vast amount of money on banknotes. Um, but anyway, he's built not the largest collection maybe, and something numerically not the largest, but, but Lou had an eye for quality. And the Manzi collection is basically quality paper. If you collect English banknotes, there are a number of notes there you would look at. A, you'd never see, and B, you think that is really nice. And there's one particular note um, I'd like to draw people's attention to here. This is a a hundred pound note of 1832. Well, a five pound note of 1832 or any 1830s is well nigh impossible to find. A hundred pounds at that, this period was a vast amount of money. And I can remember the phone call very, very clearly. Somebody rang up and said they have a an English hundred pound note and some 50 pound notes from the 1830s. So I said, yes, yeah, well, yeah, certainly you do. <laughs> Send me some scans. And I presumed it would be a, a common provincial note worth 20 pounds, and you let someone down gently. Um, anyway, the scan came in, and there was the Bank of England. And I could, I've never seen them before in my life. And they were found in a secret drawer in the back of a piece of furniture, which is where all the best yeah. bank notes come from. And the 50 pound notes were sold, uh, and the 100 pound note, of which there was only one, Lou was very fortunate to be offered the note and it's it's here in the auction and this is a staggeringly rare banknote and as far as i know there is only one in existence in private hands and i think this is one of the highlights of lou's collection um, as i say will be part one and part two part one will be sold on may the 9th part two will be in october at some time we haven't fixed the exact date yet um, but the Lou Manzi collection, I think, is a legendary collection for Bank of England collectors, and I, I trust it will get the attention it deserves. Uh, the other collection there, the A.J. Sims collection, Tony Sims started collecting years and years ago, I mean, a long time ago, before banknotes were really um, much of a collectible subject, and accumulated a, a great number of black and white notes. Um, sadly, he died some years ago. Um, so we'll not be around to see the collection come to the auction block, but he has some marvellous black and white notes, and I know that um, Elaine is going to talk about something in a minute um, on that subject. Uh, Brian Ascroft, we've got his Isle of Man notes. We sold his Walt Disney notes at the end of the last auction, which I think the expression Mickey Mouse currency <laughs> certainly rang true for that and it sold very well but too it sold, very well. It sold yeah. fantastically well um yeah um much to my incredulity um anyway his isle of man I'm, I'm sure will go very well and there's all kinds of other things in the auction as well um anyway i'll let um there's a few notes that uh robert has got here and unfortunately they are historically interesting so robert is going to wax lyrical on that so um robert <laughs> i'll choose to ignore those yeah. badly chosen words <laughs> thank you very much barnaby uh, yes, I have a, a decent selection 
here, with all with historical interest that I'm going to cover here. First of all, going way back in time to 1797, specifically the 2nd of March 1797, and the first issue of the Bank of England one pound note. Now here we can see one of said notes, but the very interesting thing about this, it is serial number two. So it is the second ever issue of the Bank of England one pound note. Also interestingly, no one knows where serial number one is. Three and four are in private collections. We actually sold serial number four here several years ago. Therefore, buying this note is of historical importance. You are not going to get an earlier issue of the Bank of England one pound note anywhere else in the world. Um, and so for the collector who really wants a unique piece or a piece of the earliest um, earliest note in Bank of England history, this is as close as you're going to get. And we have it coming up for sale. Also interesting, it's still worth one pound at the Bank of England, should you care to take it. I really wouldn't advise it, but anyone hearing this has got number one, we certainly would like to hear from you. Exactly, but don't take this to the bank because they'll give you a pound for it um, and you would lose serious amounts of money. Now, also very interestingly, it comes with a letter of some provenance. Um, I actually found this the other day at the bottom of a, uh, of a metal trunk, um, and I'm very pleased that it has been located because it belongs with this note. I knew it was there. Uh, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> Lou, if you're watching this, Barnaby knew. Okay, it comes with uh, a piece of note paper with the headed Bank of England note paper and dated 1894. It is also signed on the inside by Horace Bowen, who was the chief cashier of the Bank of England at the time. Now, anything relating to Bowen is rare anyway, but to have a personal note on Bank of England paper signed by Bowen is, it adds, it really does add something rather nice to this Bank of England uh, 1797 pound. It basically says, I won't read the whole thing out, it basically says, uh, number two note is undoubtedly genuine and is also undoubtedly the second one pound note issued. So there you go, you have it direct from the Bank of England from 1894 that even back then they knew that it was genuine and that it was the number two example. From the horse's mouth. Exactly. With, with respect, obviously. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so you can't get much better than that and it is going to be one of the major highlights of the sale and we hope that it will do uh, rather well. Moving on a little bit in time, a note that perhaps isn't worth a great deal in, uh, in, in itself, but historically I think it tells a fantastic story. This is what on, on first appearances looks like a rather shoddy example of a 10 shilling note from around the time of the First World War, but you'll be able to see it is covered in signatures. Now it is covered in signatures for some, from some really very uh, well-known uh, and indeed famous individuals from the time of the First World War. We have the signatures here of David Lloyd George, who of course was Prime Minister in the latter half of the Great War, Woodrow Wilson, of course Prime, um, President of the United States at the time of the Great War, Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig and General Sir John French, both major players in the British Army uh, during the First World War. Uh, of course, Douglas Haig commanded the British Army for the vast majority of the time. Uh, Marshal Foch, who commanded initially the French forces and then eventually the whole Allied forces on the Western Front. Uh, Admirals Jellicoe and Beatty. Admiral Jellicoe commanded the British fleet at the Battle of Jutland in 1916. And finally, Arthur Balfour who was the Foreign Secretary for, again, the vast majority of the Great War. Now, therefore, you have a fantastic piece of history here with all these signatures on one note, and they're all completely genuine, completely original. We 
cannot prove where these signatures were obtained or if they were all obtained at the same time. We have some provenance to suggest that they were obtained during various times at the Treaty of Versailles. And I think that is the most reasonable explanation because, of course, Woodrow Wilson is the most interesting signature here, really, because he was only in Europe for a very short space of time uh, at the end of the Great War. And therefore, you can sort of pin it down to particular periods. Um, I don't know of another example that has so many signatures on of all the major players in the Allied powers uh, at this period. The other interesting thing to suppose in terms of provenance is that this may well have been owned by a British staff officer who was involved in some of the high-profile meetings around the Treaty of Versailles, and perhaps he realised what was going on and that all these notable people were here, possibly one and only time, and that he was going to get some signatures and uh, that was his way of commemorating history being made. So for the banknote enthusiast, for the military history enthusiast, for the collector of signatures, this is a fantastic piece. And again, we don't know of another example extant. It's going to be a fantastic opportunity for someone. Um, and I think rather conservatively estimated at 1,000 to 1,200 pounds, we hope that it's going to do rather well. So my final piece before I hand over to one of my colleagues is again, a, a, another a pair of notes in fact, with excellent provenance. Now, here we have a 10 shilling note and a pound note from circa 1928-29. You'll see that the serial number is interesting to start with. It is serial number one, uh, following on 000087. So a very low number indeed from the first issue of this 10 shilling and this one pound note. For the PMG enthusiast, the plastic holders you'll see are PMG graded. The one pound is particularly interesting because not only is it graded 67, superb gem uncirculated, but it is EPQ star. Now, for a note of this age, to be 67 is in itself fantastic. To be EPQ and a little star symbol, unheard of. Again, you will not find a better example anywhere. Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> to add that in, probably. <laughs> But the most interesting thing about this pair of notes, I should also point out that it comes with the original Bank of England presentation parchment dated 22nd of November 1928. So it is a parchment pair for those of you who know about these things. Uh, a lovely thing to add, but then we get to the really special stuff. Now, these notes have provenance to uh, Winston Churchill which is really quite exciting. Basically, these notes were owned by a gentleman uh, called Mr. Samuel, uh, A.M. Samuel, who was a member of parliament. Uh, he was responsible for something called the uh, Treasury Note Bill, which after the First World War, in 1928 as a matter of fact, amalgamated the Treasury Notes with the Bank of England White Notes. So he was the man responsible in government for this happening. Now, this little letter here from the Treasury Chambers in Whitehall, dated 1928, a mere snippet of it reads, My dear Samuel, I am very grateful to you for your most kind letter and also for the loyal and effective help you have given me during this time. It goes on in various other pieces of information but interestingly, at the bottom there, it is signed Winston Churchill. And Churchill signed this during his tenure, of course, in 1928 as Chancellor of the Exchequer. So Churchill and Samuel were clearly friends. This is a personal letter. It's not some piece of official government um, correspondence. This is something that Churchill was clearly writing to someone he knew and knew well. It even mentions Churchill going on holiday, which I think is rather charming. <laughs> 
Relating to that is again a, a note on Bank of England paper dated 27th of November 1928 from the Secretary of the Bank. Basically says, Dear Sir, I am desired by the Governor of the Bank to ask your acceptance of the accompanying one pound and ten shilling notes, being early numbers of the new issue. At the same time, I am to explain that the request made on your behalf for number one of each of the new notes was considered, but these particular notes have been set aside for, for acceptance by His Majesty the King. So Mr. Samuel had asked for number one. Cheeky. And exactly, it was turned down because they were for the King. Turned down very politely too, exactly. but turned down. Yes. Exactly. And so this whole thing contains a really, really remarkable little set of, of uh, banknote ephemera, uh, historically fascinating, historically very important. Again, covers so many things. If you're a, a banknote collector, uh, if you like your PMG high graded uh, designations, if you collect parchment pairs, if you collect things from the Bank of England, if you collect Churchill signatures, this has everything. And we're very excited about this lot indeed. We have estimated it at 10 to 15,000 pounds. And again, as with other examples here, we are confident that it will gain a lot of interest and should do rather well. So that covers my contribution to this, this discussion. I think I'm now handing over to Arnest to, uh, to keep going. Thank you very much, Robert. That was very nice. I have here a great £1,000 black and white note, which was issued by Bank of England and its branch in London in 1936. It was on the 20th of November. So if we think about it, it was 83 years ago. Yesterday we had a conversation, what was this £1,000 worth in purchasing power? And we came with various conclusions. Some said we could have bought two to four houses in London for that price. And I actually made some inflation adjustments. So from 1936 to 2019, the inflation adjusted 1,000 pounds would be 70,000 pounds in nowadays. But that doesn't pick all the picture because in 1996, we had a housing boom in London, which makes everything very different than 70,000 pounds. So stated in other terms, if you would have had 1,000 pounds in 1936, you could have bought two houses which are detached in London. And we will leave calculation for our audiences to do how much that would be nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This banknote was issued uh, while the chief cashier was Kenneth Oswald Pepiat. And it is in superb condition. It is extraordinary rare banknote. It has PMG grading of 50 about uncirculated and definitely a highlight of any English banknote collections. You can see it here and it's just beautiful. I think this is one of the of the highest graded it's, banknotes it's a, on the market. It's a real, it's a real banknote. It's a piece of piece of history. But um, and the, and the purchasing power of a note like that. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it is a super great banknote. So that is it, what I have to say. And we have 18,000 to 22,000 pounds of estimated guide price, and it is going to be offered on the 9th of May. You're not going to get the front door for two houses, are you? For that, <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's another story and altogether. I will pass it on to <laughs> Ellen now. Thank you, Alice. So I'll be talking about this note that's from the AJ Sims collection. So this is a issued under Frank May in 1885. Um, any any issues on, um, issued under May is rare, five pounds and especially to 10 pounds. So in such condition from 1885, I think it's, it's a remarkable piece from the collection and one of his highlights. Thank you, all of you. I think it's interesting stuff. I mean, English notes, I think everybody like the Sub-Saharan African collection. It's fantastic, beautiful colors. British Commonwealth, slightly more muted colours, interesting, global sort of interest from Hong Kong to Australia to, to Canada to wherever. English notes are much simpler, but I th always think that it's simple good taste, which I think is rather, <laughs> I like the Bank of England note. And I think the nice thing about the British sale, we've got, we've got real bit of 
of history here. We've got trial notes. We've got the first ever ten shilling note made. You know, A one O O O O O O one. It's the first ever ten shilling note. I mean, the most fantastic banknotes in here. A letter from Churchill thanking someone for producing uh, the banknotes. How does that exist? A letter from a chief cashier of the Bank of England actually saying this is undoubtedly the second note ever made. If you want provenance, that's provenance. Um, a hundred pound note found in the back of an old bureau. Incidentally, <laughs> the people that bought the bureau had made money on the bureau. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, and as for the five notes, well, we won't go into what they were paid for the five notes, but it's a fantastic deal for everybody. There is there's some lovely stuff in here. Um, I hope we'll see as many of our friends and collectors as possible at the auction. Uh, and I would say the two main collections here, uh, the Sims and Manzi collections, are literally once-in-a-lifetime opportunities for people to buy the best of Bank of England currency. So, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.